Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Man of Love, the YouTube station where I give you the raw and the real on relationships. We got to talk about this. Who TF did I marry? Risa Tisa has taken TikTok and the social media, black internet, all internet relationship manosphere. She has taken everything by storm. And I want to give you my take on this whole situation. And I want to let you know why I think Risa Tisa is the real villain in this situation. Zero accountability, not enough accountability, and how she brought this all on herself. Now, this is not going to be this hot take session where I say a bunch of inflammatory things for shock value, for clicks. And, and engagement this is going to be a conversation about wisdom i'm going to share some gems with you there's going to be some definite replayability and i'm i'm going to try to get you out of here in about 30 minutes i've written some notes but i'm going to tell you up front i'm not here to say inflammatory mean things but i am going to say something that might trigger some people and i'm going to save that for about five minutes at the end <clears throat> excuse me gonna say that for like five minutes i'm not editing this video this is all gonna be in one shot i don't have the time i don't have the views nor do i have the subscribers to tailor and perfectly put this video together so let me get to my notes now risa tisa first of all you know i, I just told you i think she's the villain all right but with that said, I am in no way taking Legion's side, uh, whatever his real name has been exposed. I'm not taking his side. Yes, he, he is the guy that he has been portrayed to be. I just want to say that Risa Tisa has a lot of responsibility in this situation. Now, let me, let me go to my notes. Just bear with me. I promise you I'm about to cook. Now, one of the things that I know in life, and I had to learn this in my early 20s, when you ignore a predator, when you ignore deception, it gets bigger and it gets bolder. When you have someone around you that is scamming, scheming, and lying, and you know that they're doing it, but you pretend to not see it, that person just amplifies and elevates what they are doing i have had to learn this the hard way being in relationships with someone that is scheming conniving but i'm trying to play a nice guy role and act like i don't see it because i like a portion of this person and i'm not trying to ruin the whole situation and i overlook scammy thing one and i overlook scammy thing two and then over time while i'm playing blind to the facts the shit got bigger and bigger and bigger and it could have went a whole nother way now back to my notes i'm moving down the checklist here i am very thankful that she survived this situation this could have been a, a much darker outcome uh, she could have been unalived there were moments in listening to this story where I'm thinking to myself like man she's really she's really blessed and fortunate to still be living because normally if you're in a relationship if you're married to someone who is lying and has the level of deception that this person has it is not a good ending and someone ends up being unalived Someone ends up being buried in the backyard, in a trunk, in a body of water. So I'm, I'm thankful that she survived to be able to tell her story. And I hope women are enlightened by this situation. Moving down my checklist. Like I said, not enough accountability. And, you know, I, I started listening to this and I was captivated. Just, just like so many of you, I was cap captivated on part one. And I, I sent out... Uh, a link to the TikTok 
to uh my sister and two of my female best friends because i'm like y'all y'all gotta y'all gotta hear this you know what i mean it y'all y'all gotta hear this shit uh but it you know and it's so many parts you know i i would try to play this shit at night kind of like sleep through it or wake up and fast forward to the next one or whatever but i woke up this morning and this is what what made me make this video i woke up this morning i don't know what part i was on but i'll tell you the part of the story i woke up this morning and legion has come back to the house after being homeless and she's got the police uh the sheriff's department there to pick him up and she says that you know he wants to talk to her and she talks to him and she tells him that you you're embarrassing me and that's that's when i had to say hold hold the fuck up hold tf up he is not the only person that's embarrassing you risa tisa you embarrassed you risa tisa this was your world of delusion that you chose to live in. Let me, let me, let me, let me cook. Let me cook. I, I got you. I got you. Red flags. This entire story, this entire saga, and why I call Risa Tisa the villain, the hidden villain, the real villain of this story, this would not be possible if not for her willingness to ignore big red flags, small red flags, medium red flags, 3XL red flags, ignoring all red flags because she wanted to have a man in the house, because she wanted to have a man in her bed, because she wanted a man kicking in on some bills because he was bringing that dick and he was bringing some 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 pesos you ignored so much Risa Tisa so much and and there's a broader lesson to this that I feel like a whole lot of people are gonna miss there is a broader lesson and i just want to take a little quick little detour on this and that broad lesson is you need to know who you're having unprotected sex with she's having unprotected sex with a man that she literally knows absolutely nothing about and with roe roe v wade in the in the position that it's in right now the you know the laws have changed ladies you need to know who's spraying up the walls like never before you really need to know and and that that's a broader lesson that i feel like a lot of people are gonna miss moving down my list you know i talked about red flags ignoring all types of red flags she didn't do her due diligence as a woman you know i don't know a lot of grown black women who don't do their due diligence in relationships although i do know some but let let me let me give you the cheat code to how this whole situation could have been nipped in the bud and risa tisa could have figured out she was dealing with a bullshitter before this before this whole tragic story even got rolling now this is 2020 when this man tells you that he played arena league football that his team won the championship in arena league football if i meet a woman and i tell her that i played any professional sport she is going to look that shit up she's going to want to know the name what you what year you know they'll, they'll casually pull that information up out of you for the whole purpose of you know it might not be too 
find out you're lying or to check your line she she could just want to see a picture of you in your uniform look at your stats anything like that and Risa Tisa she didn't do her homework people walk around with smartphones but they don't want to be smart I and this is why I say Risa Tisa is the villain Risa Tisa is the villain y'all she fooled y'all into putting all of the blame on Legion. What the hell kind of nickname is that? Hold on, let me take a sip. She fooled y'all into putting all of the blame on this guy when she willingly didn't follow up on anything. <clears throat> so... That, that's thing number one. I'm working down a list. Didn't do her homework. You know, and, and, and going deeper into that, when, when you notice this guy's giving you two different socials, like why, why, I mean, that's when you stop playing the game. I mean, that game over, right? When somebody gives you two different socials and you're doing something for a, something that is important to you, not no frivolous shit. You're not applying for a credit card. <clears throat> You're not entering publisher's clearinghouse. You are applying for a job and they need your spouse's information. And your spouse gives you a different social security number than is on your marriage license. What, what, the game should be over at that point, right? The game should be over at that point. But no, it's Risa Tisa. And we're living in this world of delusion. <coughs> so pardon me, y'all. Let me, let me get a sip. As I continue to cook, the first lie, the first major lie, the first lie that she, she admitted should have been enough. The whole house fiasco, the, the first house fiasco of, you know, this house is under contract. You're buying appliances, thinking you're going to move into this house. <clears throat> and then the house ends up getting sold to an older white couple. What rational minded, non delusional woman is continuing to stick around? At that point, Risa Tisa is the villain. Now, <clears throat> moving down my moving down my list. Here, here's the part. You know, I was neutral. I was on her side at first. I was completely on her side at first, and I was just like, "Oh, this this guy, he's just so devious." Oh, it's just it's it's just all all this guy's fault. He's just a pathological liar and she's just a normal woman and she's a victim. Hold on one second. I was I was neutral and I was on her side. But then when she came to describing how he fooled her. And you know, she made a little video, she made some commentary, she was talking about well, you know, here's how he fooled me because, you know, he, you know, even though when he left for work and he wore these car, these, these dark blue cargo pants, these rubber soled shoes and this t-shirt with a logo, company logo on it, even though he left for work like that, he came home with like a polo shirt on. And I'm thinking to myself, you just described my FedEx uniform, pretty much. When, when I used to work for FedEx, hopping in and out the truck. This is not the uniform of a vice president of a company. And, you know, you, you know, you tried to, Risa Tisa tried to say like, oh, well, he explained that he couldn't wear a suit and tie because he has to walk out on the floor. I get it. You might not be wearing a suit and tie, but you're going to wear some slacks. You're going to wear some shoes for real. It ain't going to be 
warehouse boots, steel toe type joints, safety shoes. You know, you might have a pair of safety shoes in your office, but a business person, a vice president of a company, you're doing paperwork, you're doing meetings all damn day. You're not going to be wearing cargo pants and and rubber sole shoes. You're going to have some hard, hard bottoms in the mix. And that wasn't the only thing when we talk about uh, the clothes. Let me tell you, like, when I really just rejected the notion that she was the victim. You know, when she was continuing the story of talking about how he fooled her and she said that he collected Invicta watches. Invicta watches. Now, I'm not trying to shit on people who got Invicta watches. I have had an Invicta watch. I had a very nice looking Invicta watches. A nice looking Invicta watch. But my Invicta watch was about 90 bucks, 80 bucks. You're talking about a dude who's saying that he is the vice president of the company that he works for. A man that has a $90,000 BMW as a company car. A man that has an approval letter from Chase Bank for a $750,000 house, but yet the watches that he chooses to collect cost 50 to $129. Which one of these things does not go? BMW, $750,000 house, vice president, position at your job, and Victor Watch. Which one of these things is unlike the other? And that's why I say, Risa Tisa is the goddamn villain of this story because at some point it is my personal belief that she realized she was dealing with a sick man who lied quite often and she kept him around and forced this sick unwell man to continuously come up with lies so that she could live in the illusion so that she could fantasize that this shit is really real now let me let me move down my checklist other big huge lie dude said he went to san diego state i think that was the college san diego state she calls the school and they have no record of him and she confronts him about it and he's like oh it, that's because i was a, a private citizen uh my dad paid money uh to have me be declared as a private citizen so uh they don't have any records of me that the, that lie that doesn't make sense in any shape form or fashion that's like the second thing of like okay game over i don't even want to play anymore but Risa Tisa is the villain. Risa Tisa wanted to keep this man, this sick, poor, unwell man around and force him to tell bad lies to play this sick, twisted game that she wanted to be a part of. That's why I say she's the villain. I'm not trying to be mean. Now, now, now we're gonna get towards the end and, and I'll give you the trigger warning before I say the shit that's gonna ruffle feathers. We're not there quite yet. The last thing I wanna say, or second to the last thing I wanna say, we were like, I'm listening. I think I was on part 30 something, 40 something before she said she did a, a background check. Ma'am, you work in association with law enforcement and you just thought to do a background check months and months and months of of lies and crazy ass stories you just thought to do a background check so this is why i say what i say people it does not add up now i'm not saying she's not telling the truth about her story i'm not saying that what i'm saying is 
she voluntarily chose to be delusional and blind to the facts she voluntarily chose to not do her due diligence as a grown ass woman let me give you a quick little sidebar before i say the mean shit i have a a i can't say a friend i know of a woman who was dealing with a man for six months to a year she lives 30 minutes away from where he lives all right they don't live in the same city but they live city adjacent has been in a sexual relationship with a man for six months to a year has never been to his house i i once asked her because it didn't make any fucking sense to me because i don't know a woman that i can be popping up over her house having sex with her eating her food eating her sandwiches you know i don't know a woman who i can be involved with who doesn't want to come check out my living situation to make sure i don't have a wife or a girlfriend so i i asked this woman that i know of hey are you sure that this guy isn't married? And she just she just got quiet. She just got quiet. And what I was doing was I was shaking up her delusion. I was upsetting the apple cart by asking a question that she's been blocking out. And like I said, I... I I wanted to tell that story because I wanted to say Risa Tisa ain't the only one. There are other women out here that are being purposely blind to the facts. Now, trigger warning, I'm going to say the mean thing that I warned you about earlier. And I'm not saying this as a hot take. I'm not saying this to get views. I just want to be real. As real as I can be. You know, this the year is 2024. You see all of these YouTube, Instagram clips, TikTok clips or whatever. These women talking about the man that they want. They want a man that's over six feet. Muscles. He got to be perfect, perfect, perfect. Got to have a lot of money. $100,000 seems to be the minimum amount of money that women say that a man can have despite the statistics of what's going on in this country as far as the distribution of, of wealth. But all of a sudden, $100,000 is the minimum. Trigger warning, I'm about to say some mean shit but some real shit. Risa Tisa, you're dealing with a man that's by your estimation, by your description, is over six feet tall. You guys are close to the Atlanta area. He is the vice president. This is what you believe now. He is the vice president of a company. He has a $90,000 BMW as a company car. Now look at yourself in the mirror. Risa Tisa. Why was he with you? Th that's the part right there. This is why I say world of delusion. World of delusion. What are you bringing to the table? Because we e everything is looks based now, right? Everything is looks and money based. You know, that's that's the selling point. That's what social media is pushing. Why is this wealthy, wealthy man that, that's got everything popping? Why is he with you, Risa Tisa? Now, I don't want to say anything mean. I, I'm, I'm not here for that. I'm not here for that. I'm not. I promise you I'm not here for that. I'm not here to be offensive. But I'm here to prove a point. Risa Tisa, 
when you look at you and I'll just say size height size when you look at you why is this man with all this good popping successful shit going on in his life why is he with you hmm now it would be different if y'all grew up together if you were his high school sweetheart y'all met in college you know when 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 you've been around somebody for a very long time they got a special place in your heart right my high school sweetheart could 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 gain 60 75 80 pounds and she's still gonna be that cute thing to me because i remember and we built that foundation together you see what i'm saying you see where i'm going when you've been around somebody for you know I'm, I'm giving you the man view when you formed a real solid foundation with a woman it can get to a point of it don't matter how she look it don't matter how her body look it, it don't matter sex appeal can kind of fade because I've been with this woman. This woman with me for real, for real. We, I got real love for this woman. You just met this man. Why is he with you? With all this successful shit he got going on. Why is he with you? And this, people, is why I say Risa Tisa is the villain of who tf did i marry if you think i'm right drop a comment let's talk about it if you think i'm wrong keep it respectful let's talk about it but i want to know what you think please drop a comment let's talk i will be in the comments let's talk about this i want to know if if you if you saw what i saw if you heard what i heard if i touched on something that you thought about join the conversation this has been the man of love i will see you on the next video